Okay, yeah, guys, Counterattack Podcast with myself, Daps. Back again. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. Um, just going to come and talk about the general football stuff. A um, bit of housekeeping before we get into it. I've got my first live show. By the time this comes out, it's going to be this weekend. So if, you're, if you happen to be in New York this weekend, so I'm watching like the Newcastle match as well. If you're going to happen to be in um, New York this weekend, Saturday, October 29th, 2002 at the Red Bull Arena, I will be having my first ever overseas live show with guest, um, New York Red Bull guest, Bradley Wright Phillips, Aaron Long and Drew Yearwood. So guys, make sure you come down, support, last few tickets left. It's going to be such a good time. I fly out straight after, well not straight after this, I fly out tomorrow, I think. Um, but yeah, just come down if you're in, if you're about. I will be putting up the actual podcast and it's going to be, you know, um, it's going to be recorded. You're going to have giveaways, Q&A, meet and greets. You know, it's basically the same type of format that we normally have when I do this, the live show here. So, yeah, um, now that that's done, we're going to get we're going to get into it. So um, I'm just going to give you a, a, a quick one. And so. So I'm just going to give you a quick one. And I'm basically going to start with, as always, Arsenal. We're just going to get the Arsenal stuff out of the way. So Arsenal obviously drew 1-1 with Southampton today. Points dropped. It's a bit annoying because it's two points that we lost as opposed, as opposed to a point gained. I feel like Arsenal in that game started off really well. And one thing that's becoming clear with Arsenal is that we're looking like we're, we don't want to be ruthless anymore. And obviously, we're not choosing to not be ruthless. Do you know what I'm saying? But to take today, for example, we had a couple opportunities where, you know, um, Xhaka had a chance. Jesus had a couple chances. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something on Jesus in a second. And we need to be ruthless because what happens is that Arsenal also do this thing when we let other teams back into the game and we can't afford to keep doing that and getting away with it. Today, we didn't get away with it. Get, get away with it. And Southampton came back in and got the goal. And at times, Arsenal looked like we were on the ropes. What I would say as well um, is that we're looking really tired. So Southampton were really physical today. You know, they got that centre-back whose name I can't pronounce. They've got that something about, wait, I'm just, obviously this ain't a produced podcast, so I'm looking at, oh, oh, Tottenham, oh no, they didn't concede. So, yeah, so Arsenal have, um like, failed today in, in regards to the physicality. So their centre-back was all over Jesus, do you know what I mean? Leandro was all over Martinelli, and then when he went off, he was um all over, who else came on to go on that side? I can't actually remember who went on that side. So even with Tierney, he was on. Like, he was just on him. Oh, yeah, and Ketia was really, really physical. And I think at the beginning of the season, we were standing up to those battles. But what was evident today is that we, we, we legit just faded throughout the game. And I think it's time now that Arteta decides to um, rotate the squad. He has to rotate the squad right now. And sorry, guys, you, basically, what's happened now? Tottenham are playing right now. There's a couple of minutes left and they're winning. I mean, they're losing 2-1. So if you see me look up there, that's, that, that's why. Because I'm hoping to give you some sort of Tottenham content at the end of this um, podcast. Um, if I finish in time or if the game finish in time, whichever one. But um, yeah, so back to what I was saying in regards to Arsenal. Um, eight of those players that play today have played every single game this season for Arsenal, have been starters. And so, okay, so Thomas Partey in that second half faded, absolutely should not have been on that pitch after the first 10 minutes because you could see his passing was off. He wasn't tracking back. He wasn't shielding the defence like he would normally do. And he just didn't have a good game. 
and I thought he was quite bad in in that in that second half. So I think I feel like he should have come out. Um, I feel like Sambi maybe should have come in, but for whatever reason, he didn't do that. Um, I'm not really sure about this Tomiyasu left back situation all the time because it takes away from the natural width that that we would have. Do you get what I'm saying? And Tini should be playing. I think Tomiyasu can play left back. And he, it's not that he's not doing badly. I mean, it's not that he's doing badly, but Tini just gives you that natural balance. It just gives you that natural balance. So I think Tini needs to come back in and, and get some games. Um, I think Tomiyasu can go back to the right. Ben White might have, might have to sit out next game. And again, this isn't because players are playing badly. It's more to do with the fact that we're looking tired. And all that's going to happen is that teams will see that. Teams who have rotated their players more are going to see that and they're going to try and impose themselves more on Arsenal. And we need to make sure that we're up for those battles. You know, we've got Saka, who's playing pretty much every game. Martinelli, pretty much every game. Like, including Europa. Like, this is a lot to... This is a lot to take in. And it's coming back to the whole thing where at the beginning of the season, we were looking at our squad being a bit thin and we wanted to bring those extra bodies in because we're quite early on into the season. Well, we're a third, a third of the way through and already you can see players getting tired because the way we play, we're playing at such a level, we're playing at such an intensity that it's going to wear on the players. And... This has also been evident with Gabriel Jesus. Gabriel Jesus, he just looked a bit tired today. He looks like he's been playing a lot of matches and he's been putting in 100% into all of these matches and he looked a bit tired. What I will also say about him is that we need him to start taking his chances. He needs to, you know, every game he gets, he gets chances every game. And more time he'll put them away, but we need him to start being a bit ruthless. And this isn't me getting onto him because he's been a terrific buyer. I just think for him, in order to to be better, I think he needs to put away those chances. But I'm pretty sure he would be the first to tell you those things. Um, apart from that, really, like we're not going to win every game. Um, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of difficult games to come, and. You know, I, I, I feel like we missed we missed a good chance to to get the points today, and um, yeah, another thing that people keep asking me is about this title race. I kid you not, yet, I do not even think about a title race at all. I honestly just believe Man City are just gonna run run away with this league, and then after that, you've got everyone else and. It's such a long season. In this league, you can lose two games on the bounce and be out of the top four. And you can win three in a row, be mid-table, win three in a row, and all of a sudden you're top four potential. I don't know. I, I just think that um, they need to really like be careful and um, just take it game by game, as they say. I know it sounds really cliche, but game by game and just basically... Yeah, just just take it game by game, really. Um, Southampton played well, but uh, I, th I feel like we allowed Southampton to to get into that game and play and play the game they wanted to play in that second half, where it's just disruptive, physical, and just stuck it on us. And and Arsenal looked a little bit like the old school Arsenal at times today, where. The shape goes all wrong and we can't keep hold of the ball. We're just you know, giving the ball away. We're not competing. We're not picking up seconds. So, it, you know, two points dropped, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. Also, the referee today was shocking. How can he, how can he book Saka for diving there? And I think we need to actually sometimes know that, you know, it might not be a foul, but also... Like, a player hasn't dived. Saka clearly, like, was touched. I mean, not enough for a foul. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't trying to buy any penalty, buy any any free kicks. But his momentum, and after being touched, took him to the ground. And for him to get a booking for that, 
I think that was a terrible decision, but it was just in line with how the referee did overall today. So, yeah, 1-1 one, one Arsenal, and um, we will see next game. But I definitely feel like we should be rotating players now. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I think it might be Nottingham Forest. I'm going to have a quick look at the fixtures that are coming up. I'm going to have a quick look at the fixtures that are coming up. And, okay, so PSV and and Nottingham Forest. I definitely feel like the Europa one especially, we should be, um, oh, I'm going to score. No. For the Europa one especially, we should be resting players for that. And even against Nottingham Forest, we can afford to rest players for that. But, um, yeah, we just need to rotate and just freshen it up a bit. I think Fabio Vieira should come in. Um, I actually actually feel like Sambi should come in as well. Maybe just for one game start or um, bring party on later on or something. But, um, but yeah, not all doom and gloom. It's a bit disappointing that we didn't win, but I'm not going to sit here and, you know, do this whole scapegoat thing and whatever. I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, that's it. Arsenal's for Arsenal and Southampton. Um, yeah, I've covered everything I needed to cover for that. The big topic that has been dominating, let me say, the big topic that has been dominating the news over the last week, I would say, is Cristiano Ronaldo. So Cristiano Ronaldo didn't come on against Tottenham and it come out after that he actually refused to come on. So, and then walked down the tunnel and all of that. Like, we all know what happened. And I've been looking at the, the fallout from it. I've been looking at the fallout of the whole Cristiano thing. And on one side, I feel like Cristiano should always, as a professional footballer, maintain your professionalism if your manager asks you to come on you come on you don't you don't throw your toys at the pram like that and he obviously has been professional throughout his career one of the best players we've ever seen some might say he's the best player we've ever seen but I feel like he's letting himself down with the reactions I feel like he's letting himself down with a lack of professionalism and the um the lack of What's the word I'm looking for? The lack of, not obeying, do you know what I mean? But you're out there with a team and and whether you come on or not, you know, you've got a, it's, it's about the team at the end of the day and his behaviour and the effect it could have on the team is something that Ten Hag has to really look at. So whether or not Ten Hag, you know, Ten Hag obviously left him out again yesterday. And, you know, it's looking like that, you know, between the two parties, that's going to come to an end real soon. But on the other side, I'm not going to lie to you guys, yeah? I don't like how they've been doing Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo. He came, last year had a really good season in a bad team. Finished top goal scorer in a very bad team, in a very poor team. But this year, obviously... Throughout preseason, he maintained he wanted to leave. He did not want to stay. He wanted to leave. Manchester United, Manchester United said he's absolutely not for sale under any circumstances. And then for that to happen, and obviously he's not had a preseason, so he's not going to be up to his sharpest. So rightly so, at the beginning of the season, he wasn't starting. But the way that they've been. Um, treating him in regards to giving him limited minutes here, sometimes not even coming on here, taking him off here and there. I don't like that. And and I think if that's how you were going to treat him, you should have just let him go. Don't tell a player that they cannot go and then treat them how they treat how how, how he's being treated now. You know, and you don't lose your quality overnight. Cristiano Ronaldo Cristiano Ronaldo will still score goals. He came on against Everton, scored the winner he came against Everton, scored the winner, and was it the winner? I don't know, but he scored against Everton, and he shows that, you know what, he can still score goals. I believe that if you play him enough and you get him fit, he will always score goals. But the treatment he's been getting right now, I don't really like that. And I just think that if you were going to treat him like that, 
don't don't tell him he can't go. It's not like you guys wanted him to go, like you guys, like it's not like Manchester United wanted him to go and he was like, no, I'm going to stay and fight for my place. He wanted to go, but no one allowed him to. So it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it plays out. Um, you know, because I'm hearing that even before the World Cup, he might be able to go somewhere, but definitely January. But it's just about, it's just about, you know, finding him the, finding the correct solution. I personally feel that if they can find a way to integrate him back, they should. But this just reminds me as well of um, the Aubameyang situation at Arsenal, where you've got a high-profile player who is maybe ruffling a bit of um, ruffling feathers and causing a bit of an, an issue in the club, and it's something that has to be dealt with. Obviously, we've seen how the Arsenal situation got dealt with. Now it's time to see how Ten Hag deals with the situation as well. And I feel like Ten Hag is just over it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, like I said, well, that's that's how I feel about it. I feel like they've done, they've, you know, he, as much as he should still remain professional, Man United have done him dirty. And, you know, this is big, big Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo we're talking about. When everyone was saying he's the problem, he did his job last season. He did his job last season, you know. He's the biggest scapegoat people are trying to find and people are just trying to rub him out and I just do not like that. So, also, obviously yesterday, not yesterday, when did they play? It was yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, Manchester United drew with Chelsea 1-1. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Really boring match. Not really, not much really happened. But one thing that I did notice and I've noticed for the last couple of weeks and I might have said on the podcast already, so if I'm repeating myself, then forgive me, but Lissandro Martinez is actually a really, really good defender. And it shows why there were people after him, why Arsenal tried to, you know, go after him and, and whatnot, why Manchester United had brought him in. And after the first couple games, a lot of the pundits were trying to rub him out. And I remember saying after the Brentford one that they did him dirty um, just throwing him throwing him into that game, that sort of game. But it wasn't indicative of the player that he is. It wasn't it wasn't a showing of all of his qualities. So um yeah. Uh, he's been so good man. He's so dogged and he's and he's got the he's got a bite about him and on top of that he's just actually a really good defender. And for someone so small he doesn't really get beat in the air as much, as much as you would think he would, as much as they go on like he, like he does. And I think he's he's probably been United's outstanding performer this season, I would say. Um, yeah. You know, Casemiro obviously getting a goal. Casemiro's is such a good buy. He's such a good buy for them. And I think with a few more additions, maybe in January, definitely in January, a few more additions. United could really go on and and have a strong um, finish to the um, a strong second half to the, um, of the season. So, Lissandro Martinez, really, really good. Um, but guys, just you lot, just let me know what you what you think about um, Lissandro Martinez. Am I giving him a bit too much praise or not? Um, yeah, let me know. And also, Ten Hag's um, his his. Um, comments on um, what do you call it, Bruno Fernandez. His comments on Bruno Fernandez that he's been performing really well, and I don't know. I've not really been seeing that this season. I think against Tottenham he did he did well against Tottenham, but I think it's a bit too soon to be saying that he's he's had a really really good season so far, um, and he's playing really well because a lot of what I've seen from him hasn't been great. If I'm being totally honest, and I think. The other performer in the team is is Christian Eriksen. So, um, yeah, Christian Eriksen is a proper ball player. Christian Eriksen is everything they think Bruno Fernandez is. Do you know what I mean? He can and he can play deeper if he's got the right person next to him. And Casemiro is is a good is a good person to put next to him, and he can play further forward. And he's, he's way more creative, in my opinion, than Bruno Fernandez too. So, um. Yeah, United look like they're, they're, they're slowly but surely getting it together. Um, 
it just remains to be seen how the Ronaldo situation plays out. And um, yeah, but I'm pretty sure we will we will see how that how that goes. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is Liverpool. Oh, what's happening with Liverpool? Wait, well, seeing Tottenham. No, Tottenham still losing eighty five minutes two one. Yeah, so Liverpool obviously beat Man City, which was a great result for them. But that means nothing if a week later you're going to lose to bottom of the table, Nottingham Forest. And I don't know what it is. I I'm, I want to come here and give you reasons why they're losing. But I, I legit don't know what it is. Yes, they've got injuries, but it's not just about the injuries. I feel like the squad and the way that they're playing, it just needs refreshing. I feel like every couple, I keep saying I feel like, every couple seasons you need to refresh the team. You know, you need new blood in there. You know, they've got Diaz in last year. Um, they've got, who else are they getting? Diaz, oh yeah, they've got Nunes in. But I, I just feel like they're not, they're not quite, they're not quite able to perform at the level they need to right now. They need, um, they need time for Harvey Elliott. They need time for Fabio Cavallo. Who's the other young player that they've got? They've got another young player and I just can't. Curtis Jones played like, he needs time. Do you get, do you get what I'm saying? So, it would be nice if they had a few more experienced heads in you know, helping these guys out. And also, you've got players like Milner and Henderson. And these are the, the best, like some of the best professionals you will see. But right now, they're not what you need. Right now, you need you need players that have got the energy in them. You need players who who are dynamic. You need players who can, who can hack and not just be efficient, not just be enough. You just need, yeah, you, you just need more. Do you know what I'm saying? And so, and I think Liverpool will get it together. I was, I was sure, I was sure in my thinking that Liverpool were going to finish second, even after Arsenal beat them. I was thinking we're probably they're probably going to finish second. But if I'm being totally honest, I I can't see them finish in the top two anymore. Top four, yes, I can see that. But it's 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 a long way back, and if they keep losing to teams like Nottingham Forest, then um, and and I'll keep and keep you know the inconsistencies, then um, yeah, it's 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 not going to happen. But honourable shout out as well to Harvey Elliott. Harvey is he's playing really really well, and I think that even with Liverpool not performing how they should be, Harvey Elliott is actually is actually playing beyond these years at times. He's actually, you know, standing out and being effective. And that's all you can ask from a player of that age. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, he's, he's contributing to, to the team. He's like in, in attack, attack wise, defensively, he's contributing. And, and I just wanted to just single him out because I, I, I feel like he's really, he's really, really been playing well. So, um, yeah. That's that from thing. Let me see what else I've got. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, guys. And let me know as well which um, guest you want me to get on. I've got a guest coming on next week. Oh, no, I'm in New York. So the week after that, I've got a guest coming on. And I think, yeah, you lot would really, you lot will really like that one. So we're going to, we're going to go through that one. Um, we're going to get that one done for you. Um, who else? What else was I going to say? That's Liverpool. Man City, is there anything to really discuss with Man City? No. Um, I was going to say something. Ah, yes. Steven Gerrard lost his job. So, Steven Gerrard now, a lot of people might say he only got the job because of his reputation and whatnot, even though he did his time in up in Scotland first. But it was always going to end this way. I think the last couple... The last couple months you've seen it was going to end this way and and he wasn't going to um, last. And they've obviously won today. Let me see what the final score was. They've won today. 
uh, I think it was 4-0 or something like that. So today they won... Uh, one second, see more. Today they won 4-0, yes. So they won 4-0, so instantly they've got that bounce. They've got this bounce of, you know, new team, new, I mean, new manager bounce, you know, the players are, are up for it. And he's probably sitting at home thinking, these pricks, how are they just all of a sudden doing this? And it just goes to show that he just couldn't get the players playing. And a question I wanted to ask is, what's next for Steven Gerrard? Because managers like him who have come through, um, managers like, like Steven Gerrard who have come through as professionals, they've landed a job and, you know, they, they want the big job. You know, when they get that job, their reputation lives and dies on that role, on that job and, and the job that they did at that club. So, at, you know, people are going to, you know, he, what he did at Rangers, going un, undefeated and winning the league, um, what he did there, it's not going to go unnoticed, but it's going to be forgotten about now. You're only as good as your last job. So people are going to remember the Aston Villa job and how much of, if I'm being totally honest, of a horror show it was. And, you know, I, I just wonder if he's going to be able to get another job like in the Premier League. Probably not. He's probably going to have to drop down and work his way back up. So I'm probably championship. But the thing about people like Steven Gerrard is that your name is still your name. So there's going to be a club there's going to be a club that um, will be looking for a new manager and, you know, the chance to get Steven Gerrard in with, you know, and no doubt he's got his links, the, the chance to get a manager that's got a reputation, that has links to other clubs that can get players in on loan maybe and whatever, um, it's going to happen. So he'll be fine, I think. I think he'll be fine. Um, it's just about, you know, what clubs are going to, you know, take the gamble. And um, I'll be very surprised if he gets another another Premier League job straight away. I'll be very, very surprised. So I, I actually cannot see that happening. But on the Aston Villa front as well, Pochettino said he was waiting for a bigger job. And I don't know if he's, if he's at that level to wait for, if he's too big for um, Aston Villa if I'm being totally honest, you know, bar Tottenham, and obviously he did a good job at Tottenham, but when you really look at it, his PSG, his time at PSG, with all of those, um, with all of those big players, it wasn't really great. It wasn't great at all. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like there's a reason why he's been out of a role and these big clubs are not, are not approaching him or, they haven't, you know, hired him because he's probably just, I think a lot of people might see it in terms of the top clubs, might see him and just be like, do you know what? No, you know, we need a more reputable manager. We need a better manager, full stop. And I think for him to look at Aston Villa and, and say that, you know, he's waiting for a better offer or a bigger job. I don't know. I, I, I think he should have actually gone in I think he should have actually gone into Aston Villa and, you know, showed what he's capable of, got them playing well, and then pushed on from there to actually remind everyone. I don't know if Pochettino, is, you know, is going to just walk into another job. He hasn't walked into another top job since PSG. But then again, I don't really know anything. I, I'm i just going by what I hear and whatever. Like, he, for all I know, he could be turning down these jobs. But... um yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, this is a quick one, guys. I'm just flying through it for you guys. Um, the next one. See, I wanted to talk about Tottenham. Yeah. I wanted to talk about Tottenham, but they're not finished. So Tottenham, there's currently five seconds left of the game. Currently five seconds left of the game. Five minutes added on. It's now 95 minutes on the clock now. The Newcastle have just got a free kick. So, what I wanted to say about Tottenham, because it looks like they're going to lose this game 2-1. 
what I wanted to say about Tottenham, all season, I'm not going to lie to you, Tottenham have been playing a brand of football which is so dead. They in the in the earlier parts of the season, they were getting away with substandard performances. They were getting away with substandard oh, sorry, yeah, they just lost. They were getting away with below par performances, but because they had players up top who have real quality, they were getting away with it. And players weren't, I mean, and teams weren't punishing Tottenham. Now, it's, you know, there's only so long that can go on for. You know, if you're playing well as a team and it's just not quite happening for you, you know, there's only, that will only last so long because you're playing well and you've got something that, you know, has the potential to go on and win you games. But if you're not playing well and you're relying on certain strikers like, Harry Kane's and the son and son hasn't even been playing well um, or Kulazewski to be to play well and he's been injured um, then there's only so long that can that can happen like Conte said it himself you know against the bigger teams they struggle against United they were poor against Arsenal they were poor so and he said against Chelsea even though they drew against Chelsea Chelsea dominated that game and they were lucky to get they were lucky to get that um that draw. So honestly, I, I can't see things getting any better for Tottenham. Tottenham will always go and get results because they've got quality in their team. But the more I look at their team, the more I'm seeing just how you know there's a lot of work that needs to be done. You know, a lot of players need to go. Today, Hugo Loris made a mistake. Instead of just putting his foot through the ball. Hugo Lloris decided to try to take a touch and fall on the floor, and that was never a foul. And I know there's a little bit of a debate going on if it's a foul or if it's not a foul, but that was never a foul. The players were collided. like there's, it, There was no foul there. And Hugo Lloris, he's got that in him, and we all know he's got that in him. I don't know how much longer he's going to be you know, their captain or goalkeeper for. Is this his last season? I don't know. Let me know if it's Hugo Lloris' last season. So you got that. You got Emerson Royale, not good enough. Mac Doherty, not good enough. Um, their centre back option, long late. I'm not having him. Do you get what I'm saying? And they're just really passive. And I, it's good to see Basuma out there. It's good to see Ibe Basuma out there because he's he's actually a really really good player. And even today against Newcastle, I, I feel like he's one of the few that can come out with any credit. Um, because he he did his job he did his job well but there's just a lot of work that needs to be done and I don't know if Conte can stick around for that Conte Antonio Conte is actually an elite manager and I look at that Tottenham team and I don't see an elite team I don't see a team right now that can even challenge for a league in the next two three seasons you know, which is what Conte is used to. Conte is used to having teams that he can, he can, he can go and challenge with the league. He's got his system that he plays. He's got teams. I mean, he's got a system that he plays. He likes to be able to just put the personnel into that system, and it work for him. What he's finding now is that it's not working for him because the players just aren't good enough. And I don't know if Conte has the patience to stick with it, to stick with these players until you know he gets the players in that he wants, or I don't know if the Newcastle hierarchy have the patience to have the inconsistencies going on because as much as they've lost today, they could easily go and lose next week. They could easily go... Like, they're just not playing well and it's been like that for the whole season. I think Son has been getting away with it, but I don't really want to highlight Son because he's been good for so long and for me, he's just having a bad, like, bad form right now. And, and I give players grace when it's bad form. When players have absolutely lost it, then cool. But this isn't that. He's having he's going through a spell with bad form, and um, yeah, it's 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 not right that you know we just write players off and just say they're finished. So you know, hopefully, well, not hopefully, I support Arsenal, but you know, for Tottenham fans, Tottenham fans will be hoping that they can turn it around. Tottenham fans are going to be hoping that Son finds his form and. Kane fine. Listen, Kane scored today, but I don't know. I don't know how much longer I can. Ugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, the the more I see 
Harry Kane and his inconsistency because he does some good things, but he, then he just goes missing as well. And the more I see it, the more I, 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 I think about like England and the World Cup because England do this thing where Harry Kane plays every single game. Even in the recent friendlies they had, Harry Kane wasn't playing well, you know. Like, he weren't playing great at all. And, you know, they didn't play Ivan Tony and whatnot. And and I just I just think that for England to have a chance, obviously Harry Kane needs to be playing, you know, regularly. But then, I mean, regularly and well. He's playing regularly, but he needs to be playing well. But I just also think that, you know, they've put so much stock into Harry Kane that they haven't really explored the other options. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think Ivan Tony should go to the World Cup. I would like to see him there. Uh, Callum Wilson, outside bet for World Cup. But then, who else is there in regards to in regards to strikers? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, who else is who else is there? Um, so yeah, Harry Kane needs to buck up his ideas because what you've been seeing from the last tournament where he was at with England and getting away with it, you know, I don't think he's going to be able to get away with that this time. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, they need to buck up their ideas. Harry Kane needs to buck up his ideas. I honestly believe Conte will get fed up of this, of everything that's going on right now at Tottenham and just decide to leave. So, yeah, I think that was that will happen at the end of the season. And I think there was one more thing that I wanted to say. Okay, yes. So this is like off the topic a bit, like just very quickly. There's this, I've been in my group chat and they're calling Foden, Phil Foden, a generational talent. And I will just, I just want to know what people think, like by their definition, what a generational talent is. When I think of generational talents, talents I, I think of players who by far supersede their peers at such a young age. I think of players who, not instantly world class, but they've just got that X factor where they're basically world class. You know, Mbappe had that from, from young. Um, Neymar was a generational talent. Messi was obviously a generational talent. Um, Ronaldinho was a generational talent. Was he... Mm. yeah he was R9 like Phil Foden for me is not a generational talent he's a top top player top top player but I think he's benefited a lot from from a young age playing in the best team in the world and even though he deserves to play there I wouldn't say that you know he's I wouldn't say that from when he burst on the scene, he was a generational talent. I think he's grown to be a very, very good player. I think he had a he was a player with lots of potential when he first got come into the team. But I'm not gonna lie to you, if you've played your 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 entire football career with David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, um who else is it? Aguero, Raheem Sterling. Rodri, Fernandinho, like you're playing with the top, top players. You're going to learn quickly. You're going to, to, to pick up some things. And, and I think what you're seeing is a player who has, who has got their education from some of the best players in the world and is thriving with it and is now playing at a level where he deserves to be in the team. I, would just, I just wouldn't say he's a generational talent. And I don't think he, when he burst on the scene, he was a generational talent. So you guys, let me know what you think about that. That's just a little quick one. But um, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to try to put another one out during, during the week. But yeah, you guys just let me know in the comments what you think about this. Um, get at me on social media. Follow the TikTok. We're now at 1,000 followers on TikTok. So thank you very much for that. And that's where you get all of the podcast clips and everything. So... You guys let me know what you think and um, I'm out. <laughs>